Hello, everybody. I'm Dan Chack. Um, I wish I had written a book on C Sharp after hearing the last talk, but it's not true. I wrote a book on Ruby on Rails, um, which is 10. But anyway, um, so I'm the director of software development at a company called Course Advisor. It's a Washington Post company. Um, we're just a little ways up north. Um, and before, can you guys, can everyone hear me? Before that, I worked at Amazon, and during this talk, I'm going to talk about both companies a little bit, because um, recently at Course Advisor, we solved one of our latest scaling problems using some Amazon tools. Um, but again, the real reason I'm here is because I just wrote this book. Um, can anyone tell what animal that is that's on the book? Wow, indeed. I had no idea until Mike, who was my editor, told me that it was sturgeon. And I asked, well, how did they pick that? Because actually, you don't get to pick your animal. <laughs> At least I didn't. And Mike said, well, they give some broad stroke marketing copy to a room of designers, and they sit and think for some number of days and come out and say, sturgeon. So I had to think about that, or we thought about it, and we're like, why sturgeon? And so the first thought was, well, a lot of the book is about scaling Rails applications to enterprise level, enterprise Rails. Fish have scales. So that was a good start. But then sturgeon, because maybe, you know, they're really big fish. And when they get really big, at the end, you get caviar, which is nice, right? <laughs> and really, you want to have scaling problems, because when you have scaling problems, it means you've done something right, right? When you don't have lots of people coming to your site, when you don't have lots of data, when you're just sitting around and you have small problems, well, you haven't done something right yet. So scaling problems are good. Let's talk about... Oh. Coming out October 15th. Pre-order now. <laughs> I have a remote. OK, so what does it mean to scale Rails? Because um, everyone talks about how it's not scalable. Well, it is, um, but you have to apply principles from start to finish, end to end. Um, a lot of those principles if maybe you're in the C-sharp world, would be obvious to you. I don't think so, but, um, but there are principles that have been around for a long time, but for some reason in the Rails community, they haven't kind of broken through, um, and partly because Rails is like the anti-Java, um, and it's all about doing things fast, getting things done, um, not so much about thinking things through, from the beginning, but scaling is something you really do have to think about the whole way through. Click. Click. So what are some of those principles that you need to think about the whole way through? One is data integrity, um, referential integrity, which you kind of don't even hear about um, if you flip through the first Rails book. Abstracting things away, um, creating APIs that make sense, not the ones that are generated for you, and then taking all that and putting it together in building blocks. And so the rest of this talk is about Well, actually, first, my manager calls what I'm talking about building Cadillacs. And he always says, oh, Dan's going to go build another Cadillac for us. And the Cadillac is when you have all these principles and you have to do it right. And I always say, well, you know, what do you want instead? So this is my picture of what you could get instead, right? And the caption is, trust me, you don't need all that. So scaling problems. They could be too much data, too many users, too little time, or they could be also um, organizational scaling, like 
a growing number of developers working in the same code base, or the amount of code you have and the complexity of it, or managing lots of hardware. Um, so here, it's a little dark, but it's a shipyard, a lot of crates. How are you going to move the crate, right? Do you want 100 people to try and move the crate, or do you need one guy with a forklift who's going to move the crate, right? So there's some point where your problems become, they stop being the business problem, they become some kind of scaling problem. Threading is one way that people start thinking about solving these huge problems of scaling. Um, but in a sense, that's like the 100 people to move the box instead of thinking, wait, I'm going to need a forklift at some point. I'm going to have to stop just adding people. Um, let's see. Here we go. Here's what this talk is really about. It's about finding generic problems in your problems and then solving those first. And then once you do that, you can solve your problem as some implementation of the generic problem. Um, now, let's. who's done this well? Amazon has done this really well. Um, and they've shared some of these things with the rest of us in terms of their web services that are out there. So if you haven't seen them, you should check them out. But one is SQS, which is a queue that anyone can use. And you can push things on, pop things off, and just plug it into your app. Another is SimpleDB, which they kind of mark it as a database, but actually it's a, it should be used as a cache, kind of like memcache. Um, and I guess just take that and think about it if you've thought about SimpleDB. Um, Another is on-demand CPUs with EC2, their electronic computing cloud. And S3, which is storage, where you can put things in, get things out at some later time. And then as of a week or two ago, Elastic Block Store, where you can allocate disk space in one terabyte units. Right. So actually, none of these things came out of a vacuum. No one at Amazon thought, what does the world need this year? from us, and then they said, a queue, right? They didn't do that. They were actually solving their own problems internally. And then they took these things, abstracted them out, gave them to the whole company, and then at some point said, wait, we can sell this to other people too. Like, it's not just useful for us. Everyone has these problems as they get bigger. And then that gets you on the cover of Business Week. It's about Jeff Bezos starting to sell um, a place to build your applications. And so when you do, if you do use their services, this is what you end up with, where you've got the tiny piece at the top is your code. And then as much as you can of the other stuff, you abstract away. And I've got it on Rails here, but it could be something else. Um, and of course, they're adding new pieces all the time as they, they're basically giving you their architecture for scaling. There are other platforms out there for abstracting scaling problems away. One of them is called Hadoop, and it's an implementation of MapReduce. Um, who's heard of MapReduce? It's recently popularized by Google, but essentially if you can define a solution to a big data problem in terms of two functions, then this MapReduce framework will take your data and split it over as many machines as you have available to you. And it will slowly but surely solve it um, by distributing the work. And of course, I'm not getting paid by Amazon anymore, but a perfect place to get lots of compute power would be to throw that right on there. And so if you had some huge problem, like you always see these competitions um, that just require lots of compute power, like uh, I think Flickr, no, um, Next, what is, Netflix has one right now, right? And this is the perfect way to solve those problems. If you have a good algorithm and you just need to go over their half a terabyte or whatever they're providing of data, that's the way to do it. And then, of course, there are lots of other um, frameworks to help you do things. I think I'm probably running out of time. So I'm going to get to the meat of things, a concrete example, which is, um, a product that we just launched internally at Course Advisor. 
Um, so a little more information about what we do so you can understand the problem. Um, we are a online directory um, of education programs and students come to us through various means. They type something into Google like um, MBA Boston or um, nursing program Nevada and we'll come up um, in the advertisements and if they click on us we will try and help them find a program. So people fill out information um, and then we find them something suitable and in real time we tell the school about them. But we might do other things too like validate their information, we might have to send off an email to someone, we might need to hold something for a while for some strange business rule um, or eradicate their information for some other strange business rule. But basically the rules of what we do are getting more and more complex and not only that but the amount of people that are coming to our site is increasing. Isn't that great Photoshop skills? Um, so what started to happen is all the things we had to do, we couldn't do them in the amount of time we had and still keep it real time. Um, we really want things to happen within a minute of getting the lead. If you go to our site and fill out information, you might get the call like shortly after you click submit. Um, and we have to do all these things for tons of people. So we had to find a new problem to solve. And we decided, well, you know, our each of these leads is some discrete element and it's got to go through some path based on a bunch of rules. So I said, wait, this is kind of like a state machine. It's not a program that's a state machine, but every lead on a student is um, something that has this state. And so I said, well, okay, we're going to build a engine for moving something through states um, and we're going to use SQS. We'll see how in a second. Um, and we've got a database as well. And what's in the database? Well, a vertical schema, which for those who don't know, it's a way to um, basically have no schema and store whatever you need. So it's key value pairs. Um, and then the second part uh, is an audit of what the state transition engine is going to do. So we have the top part where we store metadata about the students and their lead. Um, and then the audit of what happens. So then what we did, these pink things are Amazon's queues. And we said, okay, every state is going to be represented by a queue. Um, and so things come into a queue. That means they're in the state. And then they get popped off. And then some worker will do its work, whatever it happens to be that it needs to do. And then we'll evaluate some rules. And then after evaluating the rules, figure out what state is next. We push it on. Here's an example of one. So we get some lead on a student. We need to post it off to somebody. It comes in, a worker looks at it, tries to post it sees what happened. Maybe it succeeded, maybe it failed. Um, it might have had some other error or, you know, whatever. We have a ton of things more than that. So rules get evaluated and then it goes on to that queue. Yeah. Hey folks, can you keep it down a little bit more? It's kind of hard when you're up here to, uh, to hear. So let's, this isn't a five minute talk, sorry but thank you. That's okay, I don't mind. I'm an I'm a old karaoke star, so I, I get it. Um, anyway, I could if, if, if we want. Um, so this is what we end up with, where we've broken a complicated problem into lots of less complicated problems. So in essence, the, the software code is now represented in terms of queues, queues are spots in the program, um, and rules are all the conditionals that are throwing you through the program, and then the workers do these discrete elements of work. And so we took this hugely complex system 
that had all these branches and all these different classes that were doing these things and we broke it up and turned it into something that where Amazon's infrastructure became the program in some sense. So the top here is what we wrote and the bottom, except for our engine. Actually, in this slide, we wrote all of this. But this is our generic problem that we solved. Once it's solved, all we have to think about is the top, which is actually a lot simpler. So we managed complexity by doing that. We have now three axes on which to choose when, when something changes. Well, is this a, a queue, some rules, or a new worker? And makes things a lot easier. So I think I just said all that stuff. Um, but the idea is that now developers can concentrate on building new workers and rules. They don't have to worry about the infrastructure of scaling this to 10 times more um, leads coming in. We just add more workers. So well, kind of take the same pattern in the book, um, but with Rails apps where you've got your database and your models and, and then eventually you turn it into some kind of service, right? And then you take those and put them all together, have a bunch of building blocks. Um, so then at the bottom, those services over there really represent these entire things. Um, Anyway, I'm, I wish everyone big scaling problems instead of small problems, um, and enjoy the rest of the talks. <laughs>